Hi, this is Eva from Crafting Creativity. Thank you for being here today. So today we are going to be working on shake a cars, and we are going to be using the paper pad from Crafting Creativity. We're going to use some flowers from Prima, ephemeras from Crafting Creativity, the new stamp from Crafting Creativity. Also, we are going to use uh, this die sequence more sequins, sequins, the shimmer sticks. We are going to be working today on shake a cards with the clear um, envelope, I'm sorry. So we're going to start right now and let me show you. We are going to do only two cards, but I will be showing you. Uh, I make, I think, like a nine or between eight or nine cards with all these, but you can make more. Okay. So we're gonna need the uh, stamps. We're gonna need our double side tape. We're gonna need this, uh, the die, this one too, the ink uh, tape, the clear one, your bag or your clear envelope, and your block for to do your stamps. This is the only thing that we're gonna need. And this is basically the first one, very simple and this is going to be the second one okay and then when I, we're done with this we are going to go ahead and show you the rest of the cards all right thank you okay we're here now so we already have the stamp ready so we are going to be putting the stamp inside now these stamps will measure between five to three and a half okay then we're going to use our sprinkles or shape uh, shaking mix or shake mix which is going to add it in here we're going to use the marshmallow um sequence we're going to use the doodads little bit and we're going to use a little bit of the rest of, it of this okay now we're going to tape this like that this rest of it i'm going to tape it like this like this after that we're going to fold this like this and remember this clear envelope has glue or adhesive we fold it like that and just to make sure we're going to add a little bit of tape the clear tape or the scotch tape so we have our shaker car now so then we're going to glue to this one now measurements and everything we're going to have it and um go to our youtube channel and you will have the same video with the measurements and everything. And the reason is because we have a chest, uh, not enough time over here, okay? And then we're gonna glue this one in here. And after that, this one in here. Just to let you know, I'm gonna add adhesive and all this, okay? Okay. So I I add the adhesive, the double um, adhesive tape in here, and this one is gonna glue to this one. And after that, I adhesive this one, or I add the double adhesive over here, and we're gonna add this one over here. Okay. So now this this is the easy way to do a shaky car. Um. 
that's the way that I usually do that. Uh, I do it the other way too, but this is too easy. So just want to, you know, be done with it. And it looks nice too. So we glue this one to the pink one. Now this one is going to add to this one. And this is going to go like this. Then now we're going to glue this one in here. There we go. And now we add it right, I think right there. So now we're going to add our embellishment. So we have this one. So we're going to add this part over here. We're going to add probably two. And this one I only have one. And this one we're going to add two and it's going to go like that. Also we're going to add these flowers. So we have one pink, one color one, you know, with this blue too. And in here we have white, blue, or green, and um, pink. So this one is gonna go like this. So I'm gonna use my hot glue today because we have a short time. Usually when I use the regular um, liquid glue, I let it rest. But because of the short time, we're gonna add just hot glue. So, here we have the hack loop right there. And right here. Then this one, it's going to go right here. That one is going to go right there. This one is going to go right here. And the next one, I think I want to put blue in this one. Right here. So this is it. This is a smaller than this one. So, uh, you will decide what size do you want it to do that. So I decide to make this one shorter, but um, more rectangular. Well, this one is rectangular, but this one is taller than this one. So we create one shaker car, a very easy way. Okay. So now we're going to go to the next one and that's going to be this one. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. So we using the embellishments, the, um, shaker mix we using the uh, honeycomb we already die cut this one we also cut another one to go in top of here we have we need the plastic or the cellophane um i'm calling cellophane because that's the material that the clear uh, envelope that goes like this and we have the girl with the flower and we have the flowers over here, all the embellishment that we have. And we are going to add these little rhinestones, okay? So let's do that now. Okay, so we have our honeycomb come right here. We did the, um, the die. We already cut it. We're going to use this bag and we're going to use it this way. So this one, it's going to go like this in here. And we're going to add our shaker mix. I'm going to use um, here. I have my measure spoon over here. So we have a little bit over here. Uh, we're going to still use the marshmallow. And this one, we're going to use kind of like a one and a half teaspoon because it, I think it looks nice. I like the clear one a lot or the white one. 
and we're gonna add this one here so we're gonna get the little ones with the buttons in there like that okay and we have some scraps from our honeycombs so we're going to use them too we have it over here so they're going to go inside and we're going to add some blocks in there that we have mixed anything that is scraps from your little scraps from your dice i use it they're part of my embellishment so right there so we have our shaker card now you can also add one of the leaves if you want to we're going to do that in this one actually i'm going to use the two of them that i have in here okay so then this one is going to go in here okay in order to glue this one over here we are going to use our hassle or double side hassle and we're going to do it this way like that like that there are two ways to do this uh this is the easy way for me now um but usually you kind of have to add uh use the adhesive like they has a little bit of foam but in this one i will not use the foam but I use in some of the cards that I have. I will show it to you. So we already glued this one over here. So this one is gonna go on top over here. Now we're gonna glue this one. This part has to go in the top because we're gonna fold this one like this. right there there you go then we're gonna take off the one over here there you go so it's glue in there already so this one is gonna go take up your adhesive and hold it fold it like this so you have your shake a car now okay it's so easy to do that then now we're going to match this one with this one in here like that so then we're going to glue over here okay So in this one, we're going to use our um, liquid glue. In here. So I'm going to put them on. Um, I'm going to come back. It's like I said, we have only certain time. Okay, I come back. So uh, what I'm doing it right now is add the glue to match the honeycomb okay so we have our shaker car okay now this one you see what we have over here you can add a stripe of um the foam that way you can make it chunky but i will not do that okay so then we're going to add the of tape in here okay so now we're going to take off the um double side adhesive okay so now this one is going to go right here So 
So we have our shaker car. It's it simple. Right there. So now we have the girl and I did this I stamp it and did it on black or gray uh, basically it's a gray dress that she has so this one is gonna go like this so for these i'm gonna add the um i usually forget the names when i'm in the camera okay so for this one we're gonna need the foam and it's gonna go in back of the girl I think this is a fun car. Who we'll like it? Simple. I will be doing more tutorials. So um, with this line, um, I'm excited to let you know the this line of the stamps and paper pad is new. Um, we have it, this on sale now. So this one is gonna go right here. Now you can, if you have time, you can go to our YouTube, um, find some tutorials over there and um, do learn some techniques. Okay, so we're gonna have that one in there. So and then you can add any um, words anywhere, right here, right here, right here. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And uh, now we're gonna add the flowers and this decoration over here. Again, I'm using the, um, the hot glue because it's a little bit faster to dry. So this is going to go like this. Goes like this. And we're going to have this flower. Right here. And this one right here. So now we have our shaker car. So this is the first one that we did. This one. This is the second one. I hope you like it. And now let me show you the rest of it. Um, all of the um, shaker cards that I made. This is the one of the car. This is the second one. Third. Four. Five. Six seven, eight, and nine. So we done this one and we use a, a ephemera with this one. This is part of my ephemera. You will see it, it's in here. Okay. The next one, I didn't use ephemera, but I used the paper and I will show you the paper, the paper. We, I did this shaker car and I use a ephemera too. I, I use this one, I just cut in the middle. This is another one that I make using ephemeras. This is similar as the one I did over here. And this is the other one. Uh, we're gonna have a kit and the kit is going to be the flowers the two ephemeras two ephemeras the clear envelopes the six by six paper pad the um the stamp on um, youtube this week you will be able to see more um car with making this all of it 
and the honeycomb the dye so at the end of the um the the video you will see the price for this kit and you will find it below the the um this video all the information and what we use and you can link it to the website okay Okay guys, so we are going to start the demo of our project. We are going to make a side-by-side -side shaker, uh, one using foam tape and one using chipboard. For this project, I am going to be using our Shaker Basic set, um, die set. We're gonna be using the square. Um, and then we're gonna use our Shaker Baker add-on. This is the present. Um, and we're gonna make a cute little Easter present um, shaker tag. And then we're gonna use um, our Welcome Spring paper pad. This is some really beautiful papers. We got plaids in here, nice pastels, and some cute little critters. And then you're gonna need some acetate sheets for your window. You are also going to need chipboard. You're gonna need some adhesive. You're gonna need some um, quarter inch wide foam tape, and then you're gonna need some shaker bits. We carry a big line of shaker bits. We have all kinds of styles and cute little characters and little icons of things. Um, so these are our Easter-ish ones. We also have Easter eggs, we have bunny rabbits. So we do have more than just this for Easter, but because I want to make it like a spring chick type thing, I am thinking I'm gonna use our little chicken heads, or our little um, carrots. And then we have these really cool, um, these are the itty bitty beads. Um, and they come in a lot of colors as well. So I don't know yet what I'm gonna be putting in my card, my shaker, I'm sorry, until I actually um, get started. So the first thing you need is to have all your pieces ready. So I've already gone out and I cut out from my uh, add-on piece. Um, I, this is the top frame area that would go on top of the base of your shaker. So I went ahead and I had chosen this really pretty plaid paper. Um, and then I wanted to use the bow. I thought it would be really cute in this little fun yellow polka dot. So we're gonna do that as our shaker. You're also going to need um, acetate for your window. But because I'm gonna do um, two of these, I want to show you guys the difference. Um, one of them we're going to use with our foam tape. The other one we're going to use with chipboard. So when you're doing it either way, um, you'll be able to see the way I prefer is with the chipboard. I think it gives a cleaner look and it definitely makes your shaker um, a lot more sturdy. So we are going to um, start prepping our parts here. So the first thing that you want to do is on the one that we're gonna be doing the chipboard style frame, you're going to have all of your bases cut out of your frame, okay? And we're gonna just glue and stack them together. Now the thing is, um, you can adjust the height of this just depending on how many chipboard pieces you end up cutting out. So you really won't know that until you decide which kind of shaker bits you're going to be using. If they're thin paper like um, little and they're not chunky, then you don't need as many pieces. But when they start getting into bulks like with um, diamonds and buttons and even some bulkier things, you're gonna need to make it thicker. When you end up using the foam tape, sometimes one layer is not enough and you have to do two depending on your shaker as well. So I'm just gonna get started and I'm gonna just start prepping the frame of the well, I call it the well of the wall, whatever you wanna call it. This is the part that's going to 
help um, hold in your shaker. So I'm just going to take a bead of glue and go around. And the reason why I love using chipboard and dies especially is I know every piece is going to fit perfectly together because you're cutting the same piece over and over and over again. So all I do is I line up my pieces together. I like to make sure it's flush. And when I do that, then I glue, um, sandwich this part and push it together. So I am lining it up, making sure it's flush. And then I know, and now it's a seamless like thing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna keep building this wall several times with all of these pre-cut pieces that I have made. And again, just gonna line it up and make sure it's even there and distributed. And then I just go down the sides and I repeat this for all of them and then making sure it's all intact. Another thing also, um, foam tape isn't as hard, at least for me, when you're doing a rectangle or a square, but when you're doing it on a circle, um, I have issues keeping the the foam tape going in one continuous line so that's another reason why i prefer the chipboard um, i'm going to end up getting a really nice clean look and i know everything will be flushed so we're just again just continuing to make our wall or your channel whatever you want to call it i sure everyone mm, refers to it in the different words but basically you're just making the thickness of what is going to hold those shaker pieces in place i'm going to do another one here like so and it's just building it over and over and what's great when you use dies, again, is because you're cutting the same piece over and over, you know you can stack them and get them all to line up perfectly. Okay. I'm gonna put this last one aside in case I don't use it. Then what you also need to do is you're gonna have your backer piece to your shaker, your holder here. And that is usually the solid piece of your die. So in ours, for example, we have this is the solid of the square and then this is the frame. We have the tag shape and the frame as well. And our shaker basic set two has um, the circle and the rectangle. And then all of our add-ons um, fit perfectly to replace the frame that comes with the shaker basic one so that you can now do a secondary frame. So now I'm just going to glue this part onto my base. And again, it's all gonna line up perfectly because the dies are made to do just that. They all work together and line up perfectly. So now you have the construction of the bottom base of your shaker card if you were doing it with chipboard. If you were not doing it with chipboard, you would have your bottom piece, okay? And then you would be putting your foam tape on it and then you would be putting your frame right on top of that. Regardless of that or not though, I would still want to put a piece of chipboard on there just to make this a little bit more sturdier. Unless you're using a heavyweight cardstock, most paper is gonna be at your 80, you know, your 80 pound weight. So it is a little bit flimsier. And even though you're gonna be using the foam tape on it, it can sometimes make it a little bit bulkier and um, just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't glue as smooth as it could. So I always like to, regardless if I'm doing foam tape or not, I do like to put a piece of chipboard behind my frame on the paper one, um, just to give it again, a little bit more sturdiness to it. So we're just going to take our frame piece and we're gonna glue our little present. And again, it fits perfectly because they were designed to go together. You're just gonna wiggle room it with that glue and get it to line up. 
Okay, now you have a nice sturdier background for your piece. Now, in order to make the wall of this one like we had here, this is when the foam tape is going to come into play. Okay, so what I usually do is I put it on the back side of my frame as opposed to putting it on the edges of my backing piece, but you can do that part as well if you'd like to. But since I'm gonna do it the way I normally do it, I before I can put my foam tape there, I have to put my clear window. So I'm gonna take my acetate and I'm gonna go ahead and glue that onto the back side of my frame. And to get this ready and prepared for the foam tape. And again, it's the same die piece, so you know it's all gonna line up perfectly together. So the reason why I like to put the foam tape on this piece as opposed to here is I can line it up better with the frame. And so I can tell like, oh, I went over a little bit too much and it's gonna show on the inside of my, my shaker here. So that's why I prefer to do it that way but sometimes people like to just do it right on their base. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just gonna let that dry for a few minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and start with our foam tape. And the most important thing you need to know about when you're doing the foam part um, is you have to make sure you have a solid connection to all the pieces because any little gap, um, a shaker bit can can fly out of your shaker card. Whereas when you do it this way, you know it's all solid because you were stacking it together. So I'm just going to line up, and this is um, our frames on our shaker basics are all a quarter inch, so a quarter inch foam tape is gonna work perfectly for you. And I'm just going to line it up and go across my frame like so, and scissors. And then I'm just going to cut it off at the edge, like so. And as you can see, I know that I'm within my frame because I can actually see my frame. And then I know that I didn't have any pieces showing through on the opposite side. Whereas if I went here, even though you would go around the edges and line it up, there's always that chance that you might go a little askew so that is why I prefer it this way. And so now I'm just going to continue and I'm, see I'm making sure that it's a closed gap and I'm just going to continue this and I'm going to go around my whole entire frame with my foam tape. Just making sure that there is no gap of an opening that any of those cute little shaker bits can fly out at the end. And now on our last section here, we're just gonna go across again. Oop. My tape is, my release tape was coming off and then I wasn't lining it up as close as it should have been. Okay, so there we go and just close that off. And now you have the channel for your shaker bits on the one using foam tape. Now the difference is, obviously, you can make this one higher and higher by adding your, your chipboard. But on this one, if you want to add another row to make it higher, you're gonna have to take off your release tape and then do another um, layer of foam tape. So as you can see on the sides here, my chipboard one is just slightly thicker in height than my foam tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a second layer of foam tape on here. Again, this is all gonna be depending on your shaker bits. So you might not need to do this at all. So you're gonna have to um, eyeball how thick your shakers are and how thick your wall actually is. But I'm gonna go ahead and especially for demo purposes, show you about adding that second wall, uh, that second layer of foam tape, I mean. So we're just going to layer, ooh, this release tape is 
kind of crappy here. Okay, there we go. That's gonna go across like so. And you're just gonna trim it. And you're just gonna, again, continue like you did on that first layer just to create and get a higher wall for your shaker bits. And I will show you why I also prefer the chipboard method more than this as well when we're all done. Now, obviously, if you took better care than how I'm doing right now and you went clear to the edges of it, you won't have a gap looking on your finished product uh, project when you're all done. But because you're cutting the foam tape, you would have to be really good at getting it right to the edge. And I'm just not really that much of a patient person to go through all of that, to be honest with you either. All right, so now you have your double wall of your foam tape for this one, and then this one's already assembled as well. So now the difference here is on your um, foam tape one, you're gonna be adding your shaker bits into your window, whereas on your chipboard one, you're gonna be adding your shaker bits to your back wall because you still have to put the acetate window on this one, whereas here, we're going to have the acetate and put the back wall on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get my shaker bits of what I wanna use, and I wanna use some of these cute little chicks. I'm just gonna plunk in cute little chicken heads, and I like them to be as flat as I can when I'm putting them in. Oops. That release tape just wants to come off in a bad way. So we're putting in our chicken heads. And you can mix with sequins and glitters and whatever you want. I am going to add in some of our new itty bitty beads because I think it'll really bring out all the colors in the plaid. It's got some blues, powder blues, pinks, and some purples. So I'm just gonna open up my jar. And these are super tall, small, and they go everywhere. So you wanna be a little careful when you're adding them, like so. This actually now reminds me of like ducks in the bathroom because they look like little water. Okay, so I'm just adding a little there and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab some of the purples again you can add um, whatever you wish to your shakers I just wanted to have some fun colors going in here and since it's Easter I thought these little cute pastel type colors and the beads with the chickens would be a lot of fun Oop. I just went all over. All right. So, just kind of lie it flat. I think I need a little more in this one than the other. Just add a little more blue. Okay. So now we're on to our next step, which is securing it all together. So I'm just going to slide that one out of the way for a moment. And we're going to get ready to do this one which is pulling off our release tape. And I see, I prefer not having my shaker on my window piece. I like it when it's on how we're doing the other one because a lot of the times um, it gets like static to it. So not as fun. And another reason why I don't like doing foam tape too is I am not a very precise um, liner upper, <laughs> however you wanna call it. Um, that's why I like using wet glue. It gives me that time to wiggle things and get it into places I want. Here, once I stick my backing piece on here, it is going to be stuck wherever I did. So you really have to be a little bit more um, precision with your eyeballs and your placements to make sure that you pretty much get it 
as flat on to the actual frame piece that you have. Because if you don't, when you flip it over, you will see it hanging on the outside. I actually did it, y'all. I didn't have, I lined it up. Woohoo, that barely never happens for me. So there is our shaker number one. We're still gonna put on our bows and everything, but now this one is enclosed. There's no leaking and we're good to go. Now we gotta come back to this one here. And what we need to do is we need to put on our window and our frame piece. Now remember on this one, we already put the chipboard on. Here I don't have to add chipboard to the back because the chipboard is going to go right on to the window there. So that is not necessary. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and add my acetate to, oops, to the back side here of my add-on frame. And then I can take my acetate window and I can go ahead and line it up. And again, I have that bit of a wiggle room to maneuver it how I need to. I got glue on that spot. I'll have to clean that off real quick. But again, everything is gonna line up because the dies work together to do so. And I need a fix. I got a bulk here. All right, like so. And let me grab, let's see if I have a wipe to get this glue off my corner, right, like so. Okay, oops, all right. And now I can just go ahead and I'll be able to glue this directly onto my chipboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue here. And go around and then I can take my frame and I got my paper wet, so it's a little from that uh, diaper wipe, from the wipe. Okay, and now I have that little bit of wiggle room to go ahead and get it into position of how I need it to be. Like so. And now I can go ahead and push it down onto my frame. And now this one is also done. Sometimes I like to turn it over just so I can really get it on there. And I flip it because this side is solid, whereas the front side has that acetate and pushing too hard on that, it might make creases in your acetate. So there are your um, two shaker pieces at this time. And then you can go ahead and grab I had an extra bow somewhere. We have the bow. We have the bow knot. All right. And because um, this is also the thinner paper, again, I like to make it sturdy by adding the chipboard to it. So I have one in blue and one in yellow. So I'm just going to go ahead and add my paper to my chipboard. Again, that's just a personal preference that I like just to make it more sturdy, especially if you're gonna make them into ornaments or hang tags, because then you can poke a hole in it for your string. Okay, like so. And then you can go ahead and we can add that little bow knot to the center of our little bows here. And again, I love using dies to cut all the pieces out. It makes everything just line up so pretty. Okay. 
And there we have that one as well. And now you can just finish it off by gluing your bow to your completed little project here. Just gonna make sure it lines up. Go ahead and put that down. And then the same thing on this one. Like so. Open it up. And I did go a little over with my acetate. I could just trim that off um, when I need to, when it's all dried. And there are your two shakers, one made with the foam tape, one made with the chipboard. So now I'm gonna show you why I prefer the chipboard. And that's because as a finished project, aesthetically, this is what I prefer. The reason why I don't like foam, foam tape is if you look at it onto the side, it's not very attractive, in my opinion. Uh, yes, of course, if you went all the way to the edges, did we get any of them going all the way? This one's closest to the one that's pretty much going all the way to the edge of the of the um, the edge there. Um, and it's fine, but then you have the two layers and there's the break in there. And I just personally, it just aesthetically is not as pretty to me. Um, yes, I understand that there's foam tape that comes in black, so depending on your project, you know, if you were doing something nice and dark, maybe something for Halloween, and then you turn it over and you have white showing, it's just not as um, appealing to me as the chipboard one is. The chipboard one, for me, it just seems more solid, and definitely when you're holding them, the chipboard one is definitely the more sturdy of the two. And that could have to do with your foam tape as well. I mean, if you buy like a good brand foam tape, like the 3M or something like that, it's going to be better than, you know, the kind you might get at the dollar store. But that's the difference um, and how to make them, one with foam tape and one with the chipboard. And you can go ahead and try them both ways and just see whichever one it is that you happen to prefer. But it's as simple as that. Um, some other examples of shaker cards that you can make that we um, have as well is we have um, our other shaker basic set, the one that has the rectangle. Um, we also have what is the spider add-on shaker. So you get with your shaker basic sets, you get just the bases of a circle shaker, a square shaker, a hang tag one and then a rectangle. And then we also offer again, um, the add on pieces like this, the present. And we have these in several different um, designs that go out throughout the year. So this happens to be um, one for Halloween. It's our spider web one. Then we also have a pumpkin one. This obviously goes on our circle shaker. This is our rectangle. So you can see um, the different shapes we have. This one comes with the pumpkin, and then it comes with the leaf, the stem, and then the little um, tendril. Um, I don't know if I actually have that with me. Um, another one we have, this is our holiday tag one. It's got the snowflakes in them. This one is really pretty if you're doing like silvers and blues around the holiday times. We have one that makes um, a wreath. Um, and here is the wreath one. This one I did... Um, my sample um, with double-sided clear, so it's see-through, so you can make it into an ornament. So you don't always have to use um, the backing pieces. A lot of times when people are also making their shakers, they're going on a card, so this would be laying down on, you know, with the backing of your card showing there, which you can stencil inside, you can use colored papers inside, you can do any of those things. This one is a clear one of um, just a double-sided one and then I cut the, the wreath out in both sides and I lined that up and I made the wreath. Um, we have this one, it's called Make Your Own Magic. This one is, um, I didn't finish it, um, I didn't add shakers to it, but this is another one that fits again on top of our circle shaker base. So as you can see, they're interchangeable, they're all made to go 
together and we have several of them and I will show you those really quickly so you can get an idea of all the different shaker add-ons that you can do. Okay, so um, this is the Make Your Own Magic one um, that creates this style right there. So it comes with the base circle frame and then your words to make the layer on top. Very nice. And then we have the pumpkin circle one, which is this example. So again, this goes on the circle base one and you have your stem, your leaf and your little tendril. You already saw the spider web one that goes on the rectangle base. Um, and it's just the frame with the little spider coming down. I don't have examples of all of the ones that we carry, so bear with me. Um, this is our brand new one. This one just came out for um, our March release. Um, it's a game spinner, which this is a lot of fun because you can make every cavity um, a different shaker with different colors, or you can even layer in different colors of paper to make it look like a game spinner. Add a brad to the center, and it's actually functional as well. This is the wreath one which is this style here. And it also comes with the circle so that you could put your berries uh, around the edges too. Um, I already showed you the holiday one. We also have one that makes a snow globe. So you would use the circle, um, the circle shaker base. Um, this is the tree line inside with the snow. And then here is the base that goes on the bottom to make a snow globe. This is the candy cane frame. Um, you put this on the rectangle, you cut out your base in white or in red, and then you do the opposite coloring, this in white or red, um, and I'll make a striped looking frame. But it don't limit it to just candy cane. This would be amazing at Halloween time with black and orange or purples or greens. And then these are the little Kurt candy swirls that go into the corners. So you can really dress this up and make this into um, Halloween, um, 4th of July, uh, Valentine's Day. This one's a really cute one to use in many, many ways. And then this one is our Starburst Shaker Topper um, that goes on our square one, just like our present one did here. The present you can also use for Christmas, for a Christmas present. You can dress it up um, in pastels like we did here for Easter. You can make it um, out of birthday papers for birthdays, um, bachelorettes. If you have someone getting married or just wedding ones, you can do them in really pretty foils and glitters for um, weddings as well. So we have, um, like I said, the two shaker basic sets that comes with the bases and then the add-ons. And then we add on new add-ons throughout the year. Um, if you've ever purchased any of our grab and go boxes, some of them have builder dies in them as well that are also for shaker basics. Our down the rabbit hole, which is an Alice in Wonderland theme, comes with a um, stopwatch for the rabbit. Um, then our Love Me, Love My Pets one comes with a cute round one that says uh, possum on it with the words for anyone who's a pet lover. So there's tons and tons of different ways that you can use them and you can swap out different toppers. Again, we design everything so that they're going to fit. So there is no measuring required, no hand cutting required. Um, you just pick the base that you need and the topper that you need and sandwich it all together and you can make some really, really, really beautiful shakers. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Um, again, you just need your basics for it is going to be your chipboard or a heavy stock, um, heavy card stock. You're going to need some acetate. If you do not have acetate, um, even we, we do have our own line of acetate now that we just came out with this year. Um, it comes with 25 sheets, which is a, a nice thing um, for your acetates. But if you don't have acetates, there are substitutions you can use as well. Um, I've done shaker cards using um, tool before instead. So you can always use other mechanisms and other materials that you might have, netting and tool. Um, if you're going to use netting, though, just make sure that the holes are smaller than whatever it is you're putting in to your shaker bits. Obviously, you don't want to use netting if you're going to be putting glitter in there because the glitter will just fly out. But if you're using something that's a little chunky, 
like these kind of things that are bigger than the holes in the netting, you're going to be totally fine to do so. Um, you can also use a lot of the times um, packaging that you get in the mail. Um, like when we, when you buy one of our, our items here and it comes in the bag, you can reuse the bag and you can use that to make your windows if you have a hard time finding acetate. Um, for me, where I live, acetate, I could not find for the longest time. Um, so it had to end up always buying it online and then that got to be too costly. So I would always improvise and use other things for my, um, my windows. So don't ever feel limited in what you can do. You don't even have to have shaker dies to make shakers. You can basically turn any die you have into a shaker as long as there's a part of it that has like a window or a cutout in the center. Just by um, cutting it out several times and layering it with the chipboard, then you can use whatever the cutout like, let's say, for example, you just had a die that looked like something like that. You can just cut this piece out several times, stack it on top, and now you'll have all the channels over and over again to make for holding your shakers. So I hope that you found something um, of interest to you here in our demonstration today. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!